Hi, I'm so happy you've joined me for another video looking at um, reading a book with me. So let's get to it. The Tale of Benjamin Bunny by Beatrice Potter. Today we're going to be looking at book number four by Beatrice Potter, which is The Tale of Benjamin Bunny. I hope you enjoy. For the Children of Sorry from Old Mr. Bunny. And what's written at the top is Josephine Rabbit, License to Sell, 10 a tobacco as well. And then there's three bunnies and then their mum, the, the rabbit mother in her blue pinny. And it looks like she's sewing um, some little mittens. One morning, a little rabbit sat on a bank he pricked his ears and listened to the trit-trot, trit-trot of a pony. A gig was coming along the road. It was driven by Mr. McGregor, and beside him sat Mrs. McGregor in her best bonnet. He pricked his ears, that means that he made his ears stand straight. And you can see when dogs are listening, they do that. And as you can see, the picture, the rabbit, the ears are not floppy to the side, but they're standing up straight, listening. And a gig is um, a cart. It's an old word for a cart. And also you can have a gig or go to a gig, which is when music is playing or there's a band. As soon as they passed, little Benjamin Bunny slid down into the road and set off with a hop, skip and a jump to call upon his relations who lived in the wood at the back of Mr. McGregor's garden. That wood was full of rabbit holes and in the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin's aunt and his cousins, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. Old Mrs. Rabbit was a widow. She'd earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and mother tees. I bought, once bought a pair at a bazaar. She also sold herbs and rosemary tea and rabbit tobacco, which is what we call lavender. A bazaar is another word for a market which has loads of different items and the word bazaar is bizarre. So it's a nice little play on words there. Mittens we put on our hands and a muffety we wear around our neck. And lavender, do you know what colour the flowers of lavender are? Um, they're purple and they smell it smells of lavender, it's really beautiful smell. So if you've never um, seen or smelt lavender before, go and have a look. Little Benjamin did not very much want to see his aunt. He came round the back of the fir tree and nearly tumbled upon the top of his cousin, Peter. And your aunt or, or your uncles, it's your parents, brother or sister as well. So if your parents have siblings, have brothers or sisters, they could be your aunt if it's a woman or an uncle if it's a man. And your cousins are the children of your aunts and your uncles. Peter was sitting by himself. He looked poorly and was dressed in a red cotton pocket handkerchief. And poorly means ill. He looked ill. Oh, poor Peter. He also looks pretty cosy wrapped in that blanket. Peter, said little Benjamin in a whisper, who has got your clothes? Peter replied, the scarecrow in Mr. McGregor's garden and described how he had been chased about the garden and had dropped his shoes and coat. Little Benjamin sat down beside his cousin and assured him that Mr. McGregor had gone out in a gig and Mrs. McGregor also, and certainly for the day, because she was wearing her best bonnet. And a bonnet is that old style hat. Peter said he hoped that it would rain. At this point, old Mrs. Rabbit's voice was heard inside the rabbit hole calling, Cottontail, Cottontail, fetch some more chamomile. Peter said he thought he might feel better if he went for a walk. And chamomile is a plant that you can use in tea. So there's loads of different kinds of tea you can have. You're going to have green tea, black tea, and chamomile is also a different kind of tea. 
They went away hand in hand and got upon the flat top of the wall at the bottom of the wood. From here they looked down into Mr. McGregor's garden. Peter's coat and shoes were plainly to be seen upon the scarecrow, topped with an old tam o shanter of Mr. McGregor's. Okay, a tam o shanter is an old term. It's a woolen cap of Scottish origin um, with a very tight headband. And you can see in the picture on top of the scarecrow, this hat, very flat kind of hat, and that's a tam o shanter. And you see that red dot in the middle? Well, it usually has a pom-pom in its center. Little Benjamin said, it spoils people's clothes to squeeze under a gate. The proper way to get in is to climb down a pear tree. Peter fell down head first, but it was of no consequence as the bed below was newly raked and quite soft. It had been sewn with lettuces. To sow something or if something sown, it means to plant the seeds. And spoils means to ruin something. So he's saying it ruins his clothes to squeeze under the fence and it's better to climb down the tree. But Peter's like me and a little clumsy because it looks like he fell. They left a great many odd little footmarks all over the bed, especially little Benjamin, who was wearing clogs. So odd is weird and clogs are wooden shoes. And you can see in the picture the footsteps of the two bunny rabbits. Little Benjamin said that the first thing to be done was to get back Peter's clothes in order that they might be able to use the pocket handkerchief. They took them off the scarecrow. They had been rain during the night. There was water in the shoes and the coat was somewhat shrunk. Benjamin tried on the tam o shanter, but it was too big for him. Okay, so shrunk, to shrink something, there's that show, honey, I shrunk the kids. Um, to shrink something means to make something smaller. So it's harder for him to get into his coat because it's smaller because of the rain from last night. And the shoes were wet. And you can see Benjamin on the tam o shanter with the pom-pom on top as well. And it looks like he's turning the shoes over to get out the water. Then he suggested that they should fill the pocket handkerchief with onions as a little present for his aunt. Peter did not seem to be enjoying himself. He kept hearing noises. And it looks like Peter kind of learned his lesson or is a lot more wary, a lot more careful since the last time he was in the garden. So he's being very, very cautious as well. Benjamin, on the contrary, was perfectly at home and ate a lettuce leaf. He said that he was in the habit of coming to the garden with his father to get lettuces for their Sunday dinner. The name of little Benjamin's papa was old Mr. Benjamin Bunny. The lettuces certainly were very fine. And fine means they were very nice, they were very good. And on the contrary means on the other hand, um, it's an opposite. So Benjamin, the opposite for that, for Benjamin was this, on the other hand. Peter did not eat anything. He said he should like to go home. Presently, he dropped half the onions. And you can see poor little nervous Peter with his white fluffy tail and dropping those onions as well from the handkerchief. Who do you think's right? Do you think Benjamin's right or Peter is right? And why? Little Benjamin said that it was not possible to get back up the pear tree with a load of vegetables. He led the way boldly towards the other end of the garden. They went along a little walk on planks under a sunny red brick wall. The mice sat on the doorsteps, cracking cherry stones. They winked at Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin Bunny. 
And winking is to shut one eye briefly. It could be used as a signal or teasing or in passing. That's to wink. Can you wink? It's, um, it's a skill to wink one side and then the other. And it said here, he led the way boldly and boldly is confidently. And also what I've done, I've also put this word boldly in bold. So sometimes you say, oh, that's in bold in writing or in text. Um, that's what it means in bold, boldly, confidence. Presently, Peter let the pocket handkerchief go again. And why do you think Peter keeps dropping the handkerchief? What do you think the reason is? Maybe because he's nervous and he's worried. They got amongst flower pots and frames and tubs. Peter heard noises worse than ever. His eyes were as big as lollipops. He was a step or two in front of his cousin when he suddenly stopped. This is what those little rabbits saw around that corner. Little Benjamin took one look and then in half a minute less than no time, he hid himself and Peter and the onions underneath a large basket. Okay, so he's hiding from the, the cat who is sitting guarding the path. The cat got up and stretched herself and came and sniffed at the basket. Perhaps she liked the smell of onions. Anyway, she sat down upon the top of the basket. Sniffing is to smell something. So it's to use your nose and to take in air through your nose in short little breaths. So, and then you can smell something, or if you've got a cold, you can say you've got the sniffles or that you're sniffling and you also might sniff then. She sat there for five hours I cannot draw you a picture of Peter and Benjamin underneath the basket because it was quite dark and because the smell of onions was fearful. It made Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin cry. The sun got round behind the wood and it was quite late in the afternoon, but still the cat sat upon the basket. Oh dear, and Peter and Benjamin must have to have been quiet and not really move much under the basket because otherwise they're in trouble if the cat finds them. At length, there was a pitter patter, pitter patter, and some bits of mortal fell from the wall above. The cat looked up and saw old Mr. Benjamin Bunny prancing along the top of the wall of the upper terrace. He was smoking a pipe of rabbit tobacco and had a little switch in his hand. He was looking for his son. And when they're talking about little bits of mortal, they're talking about little bits of stone from the wall. And when we say a little switch, well, you've got a light switch where you turn on and off to make it light or dark. But in this case, you can say a flexible twig. You see, so what he's holding is a stick, but it's a flexible twig. You can use it for riding as well. If we were humans could have one, we wouldn't use a twig, we might use a rod, a slender, flexible rod that sometimes people use when they're doing horse riding, and you can call that a switch. Old Mr. Bunny had no opinion whatever of cats. He took a tremendous jump off the top of the wall onto the top of the cat and cuffed it off the basket and kicked it into the greenhouse, scratching off a handful of fur. The cat was too much surprised to scratch back. Tremendous is such a fabulous word and tremendous means huge, big. When old Mr. Bunny had driven the cat into the greenhouse, he locked the door. Then he came back to the basket and took out his son Benjamin by the ears and whipped him with the little switch. Then he took out his nephew, Peter. So you can really see that old Mr. Bunny was very, very angry and probably very, very scared about the safety of his son. And there we go. Poor Peter's not looking too happy. And Benjamin um, is on that side in his brown coat. And Peter's also getting into a lot of trouble by old Mr. Bunny, his uncle. Then he took out the handkerchief of onions and marched out of the garden. 
Can you describe what you see in this picture for me? Well, obviously we've got old Mr. Bunny, old Mr. Benjamin Bunny with his pipe and his really wonderful purple coat. Um, the two boys ahead of him looking very unhappy and um, maybe crying a little, a little sore because they got into trouble. And the cat as well, looking through the window in the greenhouse because he's locked inside. And on top of that fence, we've got a little robin. You can see the orange of her um, chest and lots of leaves and trees as well on the side. When Mr. McGregor returned about half an hour later, he observed several things which perplexed him. It looked as though some person had been walking all over the garden in a pair of clogs. Only the footmarks were too ridiculously little. Also, he could not understand how the cat could have managed to shut herself up inside the greenhouse, locking the door upon the outside. And ridiculous means absurd or weird or... Um, extremely silly. It could be ridiculous. Oh, that was ridiculous. And I love this picture where you have the rabbits looking over the wall because you can see the ears and Mr. McGregor looking very confused by the empty scarecrow without the clothes, just his hat. When Peter got home, he found his mother forgave him because she was so glad to see that he had found his shoes and coat. Cottontail and Peter folded up the pocket handkerchief and old Mrs. Rabbit strung up the onions and hung them from the kitchen ceiling with the bunches of herbs and the rabbit tobacco. And a bunch of herbs is a group of herbs and probably the same type of herb as well. The end. I hope you enjoyed book four of um, Beatrice Potter's series and we're going to be doing book five shortly. So I'll see you soon. Bye.